All right, welcome to another episode of Lizard Landscapes. What we have here is a winter waterfall. So you want to build this really just uh, with the purpose of having it be a uh, tabletop waterfall. You don't want to build this for a pet. Uh, they'd be quite confused. But yeah, just a uh, really just a conversation piece. Just uh, you could also obviously build this if you are into uh, model railroad construction. If you want a real waterfall, that is. Uh, but yeah, got a uh, got quite into building or creating the fake ice. So this is a uh, interesting process. Um, definitely a. Uh, fun process of trying to create these icicles, but I uh, ended up doing a uh, slightly different method for coloring uh, the fake rock. Um, did a, uh, even though I've used in the past kind of a wash system before with a uh, spray bottle, this was really a, a different uh, process for me doing these color washes to create a you know, different look uh, for the fake rock. So it was a little bit more time consuming, but might actually be more effective uh, for a beginner uh, and uh, advanced uh, sculptor as well. So got a uh, winter waterfall for you here. You want to be sure and check out the uh, second and third channel. Uh, first one, or sorry, the second one is where I teach how to draw first one in that series being a uh, self-portrait I do third channel is a Christian channel and so we've got this waterfall here that I'll go through uh, all the steps it took to create this and it's basically based on the autumn themed waterfall or the fall waterfall so the physics or mechanics that I started off with that one this one is based on but it's got a different water pump. So check out the autumn themed waterfall that goes into uh, similar detail, but that was the first one I did whereby I've got this uh, style. You can see the back there with the uh, cord of the water pump coming out of there. And one thing you can do is if you can, uh, you can obviously glue down the trees or leave them unglued and be able to switch them out uh, according to however you want to put them. Maybe you want to switch it out after you've uh, looked at it for a while and be like, well, that tree it looks better there. But I've got this second piece that covers up the uh, water pump and the tubing system. So that is how it's actually functioning, which is slightly different even though very similar to the autumn themed waterfall. So you got the tube there. It's got a little piece that uh, acts as sort of a wedge to keep that tube uh, from flying up. Another thing you can do is add a fogger. So I've done this in quite a few uh, waterfall videos where it just adds, you know, interesting effect uh, to your project. So there is the winter waterfall. Let's get started. So I am near an open window and I'm I'm near that window because I'm going to be using a couple of hot wires from the hot wire foam factory. So I've got a couple of hot wires here, one more of a knife and then the other one more of a flexible hot wire to get uh, different organic shapes. You want to have a uh, some sort of protective device as of uh, late I've been using that blue uh, gas mask which is you know even safer than the than the white one and what I've got here is this is just a really simplistic uh, way of showing you what is actually going on you've got a reservoir you got the water pump in there the water runs up the tube uh, with such a force that it works its way up that tube and you can you know make a waterfall as tall as that tube will go usually what I'll do is start off with a basic sketch and trying to figure out certain ideas. I knew I wanted some evergreen trees and some rocks uh, that I could hang uh, icicles off of. So I'm measuring out a larger, uh, thicker piece of EPS uh, polystyrene. 
And this is just, I, I'm not even sure how uh, long or, or wide that is, but I, I knew I wanted it of a certain uh, length. And like I say, this is based really on the autumn-themed waterfall as far as the how the water flows and where a certain water line has to be in order for this uh, thing to work. So be sure to check that out. It's... Uh, I've got that over there, plus I've got the beginner waterfall, which is essentially the same thing, but very uh, simplistic in uh, creation. So I'm going to start drawing out a basic pond shape. And using that flexible hot wire, I'm going to try to, or going to start digging out some of that uh, shape of the pond. This is a little bit different than the, uh, I guess, um, method that I've done in the past where I've had uh, little uh, rectangles that kind of flesh out the shape of the pond. So drawing out a little reservoir for the water pump. And if you noticed, I drew it out a little bit too big and that's to compensate for maybe in the future if I have to get a different water pump and it's not the same size. So I haven't glued these two pieces together yet, but that's what they're looking like. So I'm going to glue these pieces together. Be sure and check out the materials list video, which will go over all of the uh, materials I'm using. So here I've got a piece where I'm trying to determine how tall the waterfall uh, should be. So I've got that and obviously it can't be too tall for the amount of tubing you have. So building up the uh, upper pond, I've got a little shape where I'm going to cut that out. And so here it is at right, right at the water line when it would flow over into the pond. I'm going to bring that down two to three inches in order to create a uh, little pond there. So I'm going to glue that into place and let that sit for uh, at least 24 hours. And then once that is dry and rigid, you can start gluing these uh, extra pieces that kind of edge out the back of that upper pond. So I just keep gluing together similar length uh, pieces to try to flesh out that uh, upper section that'll catch the water as it cascades out of the uh, tube. So cutting out a little area for the water to flow over and I'll also cut out a little area for the uh, tube uh, to rest against. And I ended up uh, putting this little notch as I've done in as far back as the tall waterfall. So I've got this little notch and it just acts as a wedge uh, to make sure that that um, tube doesn't fly up. Another thing you can do is using little tiny nails, you can hold together some pieces that maybe later you want to glue together, maybe not. It just eliminates uh, having to make the mistake of gluing and then changing your mind. You can keep something together with those little nails and then later decide to uh, add glue to it. So I'm trying to, at this point, construct the uh, basic covering for the pump and for that tubing system. So I've got this piece that ordinarily with that other water pump I've used, the uh, camouflaging piece that covers up the uh, mechanics of the waterfall would have to be quite large, but because there's only a tube, I can uh, get away with it being a little bit smaller. I'm going to cut away that section, and that's what it's uh, looking like so far. So I've got this little piece that will go on the top. So I'm going to glue that in, and uh, I'm going to make sure that there's a gap, really, in all areas where two pieces are going to be separate from each other. You're not going to glue these together. And so they're going to have to fit together, and that gap will really ensure that they they do. So a gap all the way around for two pieces that you're trying to make them look like the one piece but in reality they separate. So here's a little piece that will cover uh, 
most of that tubing. I'm just going to glue this on. So that is how the really basic form of the covering is looking. Constantly kind of putting it back and making sure it'll fit. So we've got this piece where that is uh, for the main water fall, the uh, water will flow over that and into the pond. So here, using those little nails I was talking about, I've got three uh, pieces kind of stuck together with those nails. And I'm going to try to start uh, sculpting out one of the uh, trees. And this, with the hot wire, it'd be a little bit difficult if I didn't have the hot wire, if I was just trying to use a knife uh, to try to get this look of uh, essentially branches. And you're really, you're working... Uh, with the goal of creating kind of a cone shape, so it's, you know, looking as, uh, as much like a, an evergreen tree as possible. So because I didn't glue this together, I'm going to now take it apart and uh, add some glue and put this together. So there is how it is looking. So here is a different process where I'm just going to go ahead and glue a couple of really big pieces together. That's for that really tall tree in the back. And using the exact same method, I really only applied glue to the very center. And I know I'm not going to go through the center with the hot wire. And it's just a process of working this wire back and forth in order to try to mimic the uh, limbs of a uh, tree. And then I ended up creating another one that's uh, a little bit skinnier out front. So I've got the hot wire, the, the bendable wire, uh, bent into a shape, trying to get away from this uh, landscape looking like a square. I'm going to start cutting away some of the uh, landscape and trying to create kind of a rock face area. And uh, another method of creating rock is um, this method using the flexible hot wire kind of moving it back and forth kind of randomly you can really create an interesting texture even though this is looking a little bit more like tree bark you can go back in and you know create divots and and different cuts uh, try to in a random way to try to look at make it look more like rock face so in a way it's looking like rock paneling. You can put it around there and then fill in the gaps later. But here I've got a couple of pieces where I'm going to put this on the covering. And uh, with the goal, because I knew, I knew at this point I was going to want to hang icicles from uh, rocks that kind of jut out. So I've got those and we'll add more, but kind of using the same method with using or moving that wire back and forth, which will allow you to really easily create uh, a certain uh, look of like rock face. So applying more pieces to that covering and just trying to later you can go back in and you know create more cuts and divots. But here's how that um, that main landscape that was really uh, a rigid square uh, in the beginning and uh, really trying to get it to look uh, more like a random uh, rock. So that is how the covering piece is looking. So here I'm going to try to create a whole bunch of pieces to uh, glue around that upper pond area. So using some of that same technique of just kind of moving it back and forth randomly, creating this uh, texture to the rock. And of course, going back in and cutting away at it, and you can pick at it with your fingers and really kind of create that uh, random uh, rock texture. You can always just use random pieces, of course, sculpt them into rocks and uh, glue them into place. And this is what I've done with the uh, pond areas where you can put some rocks in the pond. And uh, because I knew I was going to you know, want to hang those icicles off uh, some ledges, essentially, I'm creating some pieces that jut out 
more than I uh, normally would just because I know I want to do that effect. So there's another one there on the... Um, this will help to break up just in case your rock looks, you know, too uniform like you've done a pattern. But here with each project, you'll uh, end up with these gaps, or at least I do, and you can uh, fill them with, you know, small pieces of polystyrene and glue or just glue. So here I'm going to go ahead and glue in those front rocks. And notice how I have that, that larger one kind of hanging over the landscape, which of course I put a uh, icicle on there. So there is how the finished polystyrene sculpt is looking. So I'm going to move on to the mortar stage. I'm going to add this uh, product called Foam Coat, which is from the Hot Wire Foam Factory. And this is a product very similar to uh, grout, but it was specifically designed to be applied to EPS foam and maybe other types of foam, but uh, I don't know. So I'm going to apply this one really good layer because I'm not creating this for a living creature. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm just going to apply one really good layer of this and this will help strengthen it. It'll also give a uh, more realistic look to the rock. So this is a uh, important uh, process where a little time consuming, a little bit messy, but sometimes what you can do is uh, it's always a good idea to get to the problem areas first when the project is lighter because the more, you know, grout or foam coat you add, heavier it'll get. And what you can do in the beginning is uh, just hold it over, you know, the bowl in order to conserve uh, product. And uh, with, with smaller pieces, you can do this. And like I say, when a piece is uh, lighter. Here, what I'm doing is very, uh, very important stage where I'm applying a texture. So everything is covered now in that foam coat. And I'm going to go back over everything that I want to have a texture. And using, you know, brush, the, the bristles of the brush combined with the foam coat in this case, uh, even on the trees, we'll create this texture of, you know, all these thousands of little uh, bumps and crevices that will later really come in handy when I apply the paint job. So all that texture will kind of make each uh, section come to life. And there's how it's looking um, close up. So I've got a little close up zooming out. And all that texture will really help in the uh, painting stage. So another thing you can do is try to, in this case, I'm trying to create that look of uh, freshly fallen snow. So it takes a little bit of uh, practice here, but a little trial, trial and error, as I remember, but trying to create that look of, uh, of snow. And now please listen to this important intermission. All right, intermission time. I shared this a couple of times before in other videos going completely off topic. But I feel since some of these videos can get a lot of views, I think it's a great opportunity to share the most important thing one can ever learn in this life. And that is salvation comes through one individual, Jesus Christ. I say this because I didn't know this until I was around 34. Everyone should have the chance of hearing this. Whether there is fertile ground out there or not with those listening is something I don't know. But I feel compelled to do it in part because I would have wanted it done for me. Jesus Christ is who he claimed to be, the Son of God, who is essentially offering you a free gift of eternal life. He paid for all of our punishment on the cross so that we wouldn't have to pay for our own wrongdoings in eternity. This doesn't give you a license to do wrong. He asks you to repent or turn from your wrong actions and follow him. I think a lot of people believe as I used to believe in that your good is going to outweigh your bad. The problem is that wouldn't hold up in court, even with our standards, let alone God's. If you were in court for a specific crime, but you told the judge about all the good you've done in your past, should that affect his decision about the crime you're currently in court for? Of course it wouldn't. The bottom line is there is no other way apart from a Savior. Trust in Jesus' work on the cross as being the only way the ultimate judge 
can grant you salvation and eternal life. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you for listening to that. Uh, Here is an optional stage, and I'm using a product called Bounce from the Hot Wire Foam Factory, again. So optional stage of applying this in order to give the uh, project in general more strength. So this is something, you know, the name of it is Bounce, so it is supposed to give a more impact-resistant uh, finish to your final product. So if you're a little clumsy, you know, like, you know, bump into walls, this will this will help out a little bit with that and just, you know, increase the longevity of your of your project in general. So here I'm starting the painting stage and mixing together some gray, a little bit of brown, white, and did a, a different method this time than what I usually do. Usually I've got a spray bottle and I just cover it in dark gray and then start over. Uh, what I'm doing is a series of washes. So I've got this gray here and I'm specifically or intentionally not covering everything because I know that I'm just going to end up doing another wash of a slightly different shade in order to try to get this look of uh, fake rock. So I'll go over this. So obviously this is acrylic paint and a lot of water. And you can vary the amount of water, you know, make it more opaque, make it more transparent. But it's uh, here I'm mixing together some very dark green, so black and green. And did really the same thing with the trees. You can see how watery uh, the paint job is. And knowing I'm going to cover this, you know, with a second layer. Um, but just going over it with a uh, good green wash. And there's how that first layer looks. So all that texture with all the little little crevices and bumps where the, uh, the dark green can kind of pull up and collect and really uh, create an interesting look that makes it look as if you spent a lot more time than you really did. So if I weren't going to be covering this with snow, that would be an interesting uh, summer look. But moving on to a different shade for the rock, and again, you know, purposely leaving some sections where I don't cover it at all. I'm just going to leave that uh, under gray and then kind of working on a darker gray color here. And it was, it was a time consuming process, a bit of a mess, but I do have to admit it was a very effective way of coloring rock and there's really not much uh, skill level going on. You're just, you, you know that you're not going to cover everything and you kind of randomly place the color. And here what I did is I've got a very dark color and I go back in with a clean wet brush and I kind of get rid of uh, some of those streaks and you know 80 80 percent of it probably gets washed away but the 20 percent that's left behind uh, again building up with different layers you can really uh, create an interesting look so same thing here you know apply it and then using a clean wet brush go back in get rid of those streaks and you know sometimes it's only uh, five or ten percent of the color that gets left behind and then you leave it to dry and then you're off to another layer applying a slightly different color. So here I've got a little bit of a washed out brown and you know looking at pictures of rock uh, it's got sometimes several different uh, variations of uh, shades. So applying a second coat to the uh, trees and again using a wash so it's gonna shows some of that color of the first coat underneath and here what I'm doing is uh, applying a sort of dark blue to the uh, the pond areas. So I've got kind of a sharp edge to it but later what I did was take a clean wet brush and kind of blended that uh, edge. So it's a good idea to blend these edges so uh, with the pursuit of you know goal of trying to get it to look more natural And did the same thing for the upper pond area. And then couldn't quite get away from 
the old painting ways of uh, using a dry brush. So this is really where you can see the texture kind of coming to life. I've got a brush that I filled with a dark gray and then kind of removed most of all of uh, the paint on the brush and then going over a textured area, it'll uh, pull off a little bit of that dark paint and all that texture that I did uh, really starts to come to life. So here is a, uh, just with the topography of the landscape, that tree has got quite the lean going on it. So to try to, you can just, obviously there's trees like that in nature, you can just leave that. But wanted to uh, show you how to correct that if you wanted to. It's really kind of an obvious um, process, just applying some some uh, polystyrene there and just giving it, uh, giving that tree sort of a lift. And here what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to create a test or do a test to make sure that there's no huge uh, structural problems uh, with how the water flows. So I'm going to apply this uh, sealant uh, just as sort of like a temporary stage. This is a water resistant sealant and be sure to check out the materials list video that will go over all this. Um, I let that dry for 72 hours so it would uh, create a full water re repellent finish. And adding water here, trying to make sure it all fit together, you know, with that second piece, and then turn it on and see if there's any major leaks. It's going to flow a little bit differently than after I apply the silicone. But, uh, this is a good idea and maybe this is something I really should have done before I even started the painting process because if there was a structural problem, you'd really want to fix it and it could be could turn into quite the, the mess of uh, changes if there's an issue. Here's just another way of adding detail where you can kind of create these fake cracks in the rock which will really uh, kind of separate um, your rock is sometimes you can get it to where it'll look like just this big mass of a blob of rock if you will so just another technique and here is really this was fun and interesting uh, applying the snow which uh, is really kind of effortless you're just using acrylic white paint and kind of paying attention to the uh, the landscape whether or not it's flat if it's flat, it's obviously going to have a thicker snow. There's not going to be too many gaps or, uh, or holes in the, in the paint job. So anything that is kind of horizontal, you know, perfectly flat, you're going to have a thicker snow. But then when you get to uh, any type of rock face that is uh, slightly vertical and obviously vertical, you're going to have this tapering effect. And you're, this is really, again, where you can see the benefit of texture texturizing your landscape so as uh, you know the the rock face gets more vertical stands to reason that there'd be less snow that would catch against uh, the texture of the rock so on this and you can really make it look as if you spend hours and hours when in, in reality I'm just brushing over the texture that I applied So this was a fun process of uh, applying this you know, to the rock face. As you can see, I'm being kind of light with any area that uh, is very vertical because it wouldn't have as much you know, snow that catches it. And here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about just on that rock. The top of it is very flat, so it's going to have a thicker snow. And then as I work downward, the texture that I applied to it kind of gives this tapering effect and makes it look a little bit more realistic and it's really just the texture kind of doing the work and you know you realizing you uh, don't want to apply as much pressure and that's really what I did to the rest of the, uh, the the rock face is any area that is flat horizontal is going to have a little bit more snow and uh, any area that uh, is more vertical has that kind of tapering, sometimes tapering off to uh, nothing, you know, but the rock. So here we've got the back. You can see that kind of obvious seam. That's up to you if you want to 
try to blend that a little better than what I've done, but kind of quickly going over the texture of the back there, even though it's like extremely vertical, uh, and going through a, uh, or, uh, painting a tree here. Same thing with that texture, it kind of pulls off. I'll have a close up here. Uh, the, uh, the white paint kind of creating this natural look where, you know, the ends of the, the limbs would understandably have more snow built up. You can see getting in through uh, in between the limbs and just the texture having uh, applied that it's got those uh, holes where you've got you know green and a little bit of snow and then green. So here just really quickly uh, going through that uh, middle tree and just really there's nothing to it as long as you've applied that you know with the brush and the foam coat and the uh, stippling really and there you have the finished paint job everything all the snow has been applied you can see a little bit of the rock underneath and it's time to seal it now even though this is not for a living creature I'm gonna seal this it'll help protect it Obviously, for the sections where water is going to be over it all the time, you would definitely want to have the sealant. So I applied, I, I believe, three layers of this. And uh, in between each layer, you want to have it dry for 72 hours. And that gives it time to reach that full water uh, repellency. So I'm going to go over this, even the pieces that are not going to have water on it. And... Uh, It'll really make it last longer, make it uh, a little bit more tough. You can sprinkle sand on this to make it even tougher. And you want to get to uh, all of the sections, even the uh, underneath of the project. Once that's dry, again, the last layer drying for another 72 hours, I, I put it outside. And it's outside because I'm going to apply silicone. And I'm just applying aquarium-grade silicone, but it can be quite harsh. Uh, when wet, but after dry or cured, it's uh, food safe. And so using some fine touch plastic gloves here, going to try to work this into every single crevice where there's going to be water on it all the time. So this is a process where you really want to try to block out, you know, a few hours and not you know, have to rush through this because it's uh, it can be a little bit time consuming. You really want to go over each area twice, you know, as you're doing it. Sort of how you mow a lawn where, you know, you get a part and then go over the, the other uh, section you just mowed to make sure you didn't miss a, a section. You really want to cover that and make sure it's uh, good and covered because if one piece ain't covered, it's, it's going to have a leak. Then I'm going to set it out into uh, that container and let it dry or cure for a week let it air out and uh, bring it back inside and here is the process of creating those icicles and I'm using the same product that I just used to seal to uh, make the project uh, water resistant and again aquarium grade silicone so in some of the bottles that you can buy it comes with this uh, nozzle where you can um, you know, apply or I guess, you know, have that uh, silicone out onto some wax paper. And here I've got a different product that actually worked a little bit better. And that just came in a tub. So I'm using a brush and then a sharp knife trying to uh, create that classic look of a icicle where it's very sharp at the bottom and at the other end, it's kind of a uh, thicker and fatter as it tapers down into that point. And like I say, I applied this to uh, wax paper and let that dry with this product, I think, for a good four days. It becomes uh, clear than using a uh, razor blade trying to, sometimes it would peel off perfectly, other times you'd have to kind of work at it to get the wax paper off. But you can really create a, a very realistic uh, icicle look and um, you know creating more layers of ice 
trying to get a different look, you know, that's uh, synonymous with winter. Using some of that same product, um, you know, these icicles are so light that all it took was some of that same product uh, and it would just stick right to it. And um, placing it right on the rock there. And sometimes you'll get this where uh, it's kind of, uh, it's a little bit messy and take some scissors and cut away that edge try to uh, clean up the edges a little bit of the icicles. So going on the other side there and kind of cutting away some of that excess that uh, can happen. So I'm going to start applying or keep applying some icicles. And one of the things that uh, happened is sometimes I'd go back the next day and one of the icicles would not be uh, pointing down it would, uh, through the drying process, it would basically dry at a certain angle that didn't look natural. So some of them I had to cut off and kind of start over on a certain uh, section of the project. So it's something you want to go back and make sure it's, it's drying correctly. If not, if it just looks too unnatural with how it's uh, sort of defying gravity then you'll have to do what I did, just cut it off and kind of start over on uh, certain areas. You can see there where I'm trying to make sure or encourage it to uh, be pointing directly downward because it just doesn't look right if it doesn't. So here's an area where I've already got a little bit of ice built up. This is dried for four days. I'm going to go back in and just try to build up that area where it's not an icicle, but it's just more ice that has built up on that uh, rock ledge. And here, because I know I'm going to have these two pieces that are going to fit together, but they're not going to be glued together, I'm going to apply that uh, same water-resistant acrylic sealant to the areas of contact where those two pieces are going to come into contact with each other. And then I'm going to sprinkle sand on them, and this acts as sort of a barrier so that the two pieces don't get stuck together and you can easily uh, pull them apart. Whereby if it was just the sealant, they'd be more apt to uh, stick together. So I'm going to do this with the uh, base of where that covering piece is going to sit. Probably a good idea is if you don't glue the trees down to do that with the trees as well. Here's another method where you're just using some of that same sealant and then applying white sand. So this is obviously just to try to create that look of more realistic, uh, fluffy snow. So applying uh, really applied white sand to pretty much everything, all surfaces. And then once that's dry, lifting it upside down, trying to get the excess sand off. And then obviously you can take a brush and uh, get some of that sand uh, out of there trying to not get it into the pond because you don't want it in there with the silicone. So there you have it. Once that has dried, got a winter waterfall. Be sure and check out the other waterfalls, especially the autumn-themed uh, waterfall, which goes over the uh, mechanics of how this works. Uh, but check out the second channel and the third channel. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.